Hey, Noah here. Now that we're pushing closer to the release of Chef RPG, I realized I've been procrastinating on updating the most important aspect of the game, which is the restaurant gameplay. Currently, our restaurant service in Chef RPG is relatively straightforward. You open the restaurant and guests will arrive. You prepare the dishes they order and they'll leave once they finish eating. You do this repeatedly every day to earn money. It's a typical restaurant gameplay loop, but I think players would get bored of this over time if that's all the game has. So I want to add a couple more features to the restaurant to give a bit more variety to the gameplay. The first addition is pretty obvious, which is to have critics. Critics should be able to visit the restaurant from time to time and provide restaurant reviews. Critics will also play a role in the story, which is a major plot device in the movie Ratatouille, where the finale is hinged on the arrival of this extremely harsh critic and his eventual review. Critics are an effective way to move the story forward. The second is for restaurants to be able to host events. For most restaurants, you can usually book out the entire venue to host a party. I think there can be some interesting gameplay centered around hosting parties and force you to change your menu and decor. For example, the player can be required to host a party for a group of vegetarians and they want a venue with a rustic decor to have the best experience. There's a lot of features and systems to add here. Let's start with the parties. Currently in the game, there is a bulletin board where you can pick up some randomly generated tasks to help an NPC. I think it will be interesting if you can accept party contracts as well. So instead of simpler tasks like collecting items or defeating creatures, you will be required to host a party for one of the NPCs within a certain amount of days. The rewards you get will depend on how well the party went. Parties will require a completely new set of information to display, so we'll need to update this UI to add in the new info. The data for the party needs to be passed around in the game, so we'll need to store all this info inside a neat little package. Within this package, we'll need to know the NPC that is hosting the party, the number of guests, the type of food they'll want to eat, the type of music they want, and the type of interior decor they would prefer. I want a system where the player doesn't need to follow any of these preferences, but the closer you are to the requirements, the happier the guests will be and the better rewards you'll get at the end of the event. Let's add a button that only appears if you have a party to host. We can now accept a party contract at a bulletin board. If we go back to the restaurant, this button will appear that will allow us to switch between parties or a regular service. Before jumping too far, we need to decide the factors that will determine if the party was a success or a failure. Instead of designing each piece in order of gameplay, it would be useful to design this system backwards, starting with the party end UI. By starting with the end UI, we know exactly what the result of a party will be and the kind of data we will need to keep track of during gameplay. And this UI is arguably the most important UI in the game because this is the part where you receive the rewards for your efforts. Games like Stardew Valley and Vampire Survivors do the rewards UI extremely well. And this dopamine hit you get from all these flashy animations and rising numbers makes these games more addictive and makes players want to keep playing. Even if there are no over-the-top casino-style animations like in Vampire Survivors, the rewards panel should still be exciting to look at. If we look at the current UI, it's very functional, but it's not very exciting to look at because it's just a bunch of numbers. There needs to be a greater visual appeal to this end screen. I think it's best to just completely redesign this UI to fit the new requirements. I really like this parchment style UI from the bulletin board, so let's use this for the restaurant as well. It gives a much warmer feel compared to the gray box we used to have. We can keep this darker area on the right side to display additional information. Now if we have a party, we'll be able to immediately see which event we completed, how it went, and the rewards that we're getting. And instead of giving players a score out of 100 to reflect how the party went, I feel that a better method would be to utilize a star system. That way, if you do everything well in the event, you'll be able to receive up to 10 stars. But as you progress through the game, your recipes will be enhanced, your cooking skills will increase, and your decorations will be much better. By going above and beyond, you can receive an additional 10 stars, which turns these gold stars into diamond stars. This way, players can still receive 10 stars during the early game to show that they are on the right track, but you can break past that limit once you've upgraded your menu and restaurant. Depending on the stars you receive, your rewards will be different. If you break past 10 stars, we will have access to a new set of rare rewards, so this should incentivize players to upgrade their recipes. Now let's jump into the actual gameplay. Typically when you host a party, all the guests will need to be there before a party starts. This is different than a normal restaurant service where guests slowly trickle in. There's a couple ways to progress from here. I felt that the best method was to have all the guests idle around the restaurant and chat before sitting down. There should be a button that allows the player to start the actual service. After some tinkering, the button is now active, and when we press the button, all the guests get sent to their seats. 
so an issue immediately comes up. You see that all the orders immediately arrive at once. Currently, we can open the restaurant even if you're the only chef. But for events, if you're the only chef in the kitchen, it's impossible to complete all these orders without making customers wait forever. So I think parties should add a staff requirement proportional to the amount of guests arriving. So if we edit the scripts, if we go back, the party now requires 5 chefs and 5 waiters to start instead of 1. When we hire the required amount, we can begin the service. The next step is to of course serve the food. But we need to know what kind of party we're having and what kind of foods will be served. I came up with some different party types. You can have things like birthday parties, BBQs, or even a private meal for one guest. For now, I'm not going to add weddings since those are a lot more complicated and time consuming to code. It might be something I revisit in the future. If we're having a BBQ, there would need to be a lot of meat dishes. We can have a mixology focused party, so you'll need to serve a lot of drinks in your menu to make the guests happy. Each party should have their own unique dialogues to make them feel immersive. In the case of a mixology party, the host can be trying to express their passion for brewing, but the guests don't actually care and just came for the alcohol. We can have some funny dialogues revolve around things like that. In most parties, the host usually gives a speech. Let's add a new stage furniture item into the game. The stage should have a mic that turns towards different directions depending on where the NPC is facing. Now when we start the party, the host should approach the stage. I added a bit of code here so the host is facing the direction with the most guests, because it would be weird if the host was talking towards the wall. All the guests and staff will turn and face the host, and the speech will begin. When the speech is over, all the guests will go to their seats. The rest of the service is fairly normal, just with some unique dialogues. When the party ends, I thought it would be best if the host also gave an end speech to give the party some proper closure. It's a better option than having guests just abruptly leave. When the event ends, the end screen will pop up and we can see the results. But right now, it's not showing the results of the event. There's a few more pieces of information that's missing. If the guests wanted an all vegetarian or all vegan menu, we need a way to track this. And this is where one of the most requested features of Chef RPG comes into play. Players should be able to get through the entire game using a vegetarian or a vegan menu. For every recipe, we will need to know if it's a meat dish, a vegetarian dish, or a vegan dish. Since you can enhance recipes with different ingredients later in the game, the vegan status of every recipe needs to be updated if the ingredients change. If we look at the recipe tooltip, it should say on the tooltip if the dish is a meat dish or a vegan dish. I felt that this is a good time to redesign this recipe tooltip. Similar to the old finance menu, it's very functional but not great looking. It lacks a cozy vibe. Since I'm liking this parchment style UI, let's change this tooltip to the same style. Now we get a UI that looks a lot warmer and there's some extra space to include additional info like vegan status, research type, and sale price. And since we've already changed two UIs, let's update the main menu selection UI as well. If we look on the left, your current menu appears as text. Let's change these into food icons so the menu is a lot more visual and you don't need to read the names of all your dishes, which can be hard to remember. Also up here on the top right, there's way too many buttons grouped together. This can be redesigned to use icons instead of words, and these menu type buttons can be moved down to reduce clutter. Let's change this UI into the warmer parchment style and redesign the buttons to make it easier to navigate. This took some time, but now the UI looks a lot cleaner. The button clutter at the top is gone. The menu slots on the left directly shows the minimum and maximum dishes you can have depending on your operation mode. We can also include a vegan status for the entire menu. So now you can see if your menu is a vegetarian or vegan menu. I also want to add a chef award system in the future, and some awards will be given if you progress through the game with a vegetarian or vegan only menu. Now let's test this. If I update the menu, this vegan icon should change depending on which dish I add. Going back to the event, when we complete the event, depending on how well you match the party requirements, you'll be able to receive extra reputation and some special rewards. Another factor that affects your performance is how well you match the decor that the host wanted. I won't go into this too much in this video, but every furniture item now has a style type and style level. If the guest wants a rustic style party, it will encourage players to change the restaurant decor to match the new style. I think there's a lot of possibilities to expand this system down the road. Early access will help with determining the direction to take some of these systems for the 1.0 release. The next important feature to add are critics and reviews. Aside from the main story, we can have different critics visit from time to time. With progressively harsher critics arriving at your restaurant to give a bit of added challenge that scales with your progress. Critics are easier to add because we can just utilize a regular restaurant service and the critic will just be one of the guests. 
We can add a notice here on this button for when a critic is arriving to give players a heads up and be more prepared. In addition, we should add an icon on the critic so you know which NPC is the critic. This doesn't really impact the gameplay much, but I thought these visual indicators will help inform players better. Since critics arrive during a regular service, we don't need to adjust the gameplay very much. The only thing we need to do is to keep track of the dishes that the critic consumes so we can add it to the review. Here, I kind of took a detour from the restaurant gameplay and added one more important feature in Chef RPG, which is the mailbox. I'll skip over the process of making this since it's mostly UI work and not very interesting, but it's an important feature to have for the game because we can now receive letters and gifts from NPCs and receive some quests or just random lore related mail from time to time. One of the things that makes the gameplay loop of Stardew Valley interesting is that every day when you wake up, something new happens when you leave your house. This could be an NPC coming to greet you or receiving some mail that gives you a quest. This is effective because it breaks the repetitive farming loop and gives a little surprise for the player each day. It also gives you a sense of progression even if you have done nothing except sleep to the next day. Now every morning you might receive something new in the mailbox. This indicator will appear if there is mail. I just generated some random mail to test it out for now. If you're good friends with an NPC or in a romantic relationship, you can receive some gifts from time to time. Leftover items from quests that don't fit in your inventory can also be delivered here. Let me know if you have ideas for other things that can arrive in your mail. This is also the perfect place to receive reviews from food critics. I thought it'd be interesting if the reviews came in the form of a traditional newspaper article. We can make a stack of newspapers as the icon, and when you click them, it opens up to a full newspaper page. It would be good to include some visuals to go with the paper so it's not all just text. There's multiple restaurants in the game, so the review should include a picture of the restaurant being reviewed. Also, I thought it'd be cool if the critic mentions their favorite dish, which would be the dish that had the highest score. So we can place a picture of food here, which will change to the critic's top dish. For the main article, I wanted it to read like a proper review, which would mean that there's going to be a lot of text. I tried doing a condensed version of a review, but it just didn't read very well. Critics usually have very strong language skills, so the review article should really show that, and it gives players something interesting to read. Of course, players can easily skip it if they don't like to read a lot of text in game. I really want the review to accurately reflect the state of your restaurant. The review should be broken down into multiple segments. For example, one of the paragraphs can talk about the main story progress of your character. The further you've progressed in the story, the higher your reputation, and the critic will mention your current notoriety. Another segment can talk about the quality of the decor inside the restaurant. One segment should obviously mention the quality of the food, as well as the critic's favorite dish. Each section should have their own score. For example, based on your service performance, the critic can mention how the food in your restaurant was great, but the service was terribly slow. Finally, we'll need an overall verdict after tallying up scores from each section. I think using the star system with the bonus stars works pretty well, so we can use it again here. In the early game, if you do everything perfect, you might get 10 stars. The critic will say that the restaurant was very good, but not up to the standards of the nation's top restaurants. Only in the late game when you've upgraded your restaurant and menu and managed to get multiple diamond stars, it's only then that the critic might say that your restaurant is one of the best in the country. On the other hand, if you get less than 4 or 5 stars, prepare to have some brutal Gordon Ramsay style insults thrown your way. So now when we open the restaurant, we can see that the critic is scheduled to arrive. When we open, the critic will come and sit down like a regular customer. It's the same as a regular service, but after all the guests have left, we'll get a notification here regarding the critic. I thought it would make sense if the review arrives the next day rather than right after the critic leaves. So if we go outside and check the mailbox, we won't see the review yet. The mail is essentially sent to a temporary mailbox and only gets transferred to the main one once you go to sleep. We'll need to go to bed and wait till next day. The next morning when we come back and open the mailbox again, we can see that the review has arrived. When we open the review, we can get a detailed breakdown of the critic's experience. I think these reviews can help players determine what aspects of the restaurant they should improve to earn higher reputation levels. Instead of having some tutorial that outright tells players what to improve, the review system can be an immersive way to get the same information. We can see that the critic thought the food was terrible. He did think that the service was great and the food arrived fast, so that's a plus I guess. So hopefully these additions should give some more variety and challenge to the restaurant aspect of the game. There's a few more minor features I'm planning to add to the restaurant to give it a bit more depth, but I won't go over those for now to avoid spoilers.
Since we're getting closer and closer to the early access launch, it's kind of hard to resist the urge to add more and more features. Food is such a large topic, and having an open world cooking game means that pretty much any food related gameplay idea could technically work. I just have a constant stream of food related ideas, but I just have to shelf most of them for now until the 1.0 release. With the player feedback from the early access, it should give us a better idea of the balancing and see what aspects of the game players enjoy more so that we can decide which of those new features should be implemented first. I do want to announce the early access release date properly with a trailer, and that will be the next video on this channel. So keep an eye out if you want to see some of the other cool stuff my team and I have been working on. Personally, I'm in a weird state of being kind of physically burnt out, but still extremely excited about the game and wanting to work on it every possible minute. For any project, it's usually the beginning and end parts that are the most exciting, and the middle is usually a slog. Now that we've reached the final stretch, it kind of feels like the first months of development again. When I try to take a break, I just keep thinking about the next cool thing I want to add and jump back to work. I remember getting excited for hours after drawing this gift box. For some reason, I got super fixated on that box and kept coming back to admire it. For a while, it felt like this box was the best and most important object in the entire game. I've been working on this project non-stop for almost 4 years and maybe I'm going a little bit crazy. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed seeing the implementation of the new features. The next video will be the new trailer for Chef RPG and there might be one more devlog before the early access. It's going to be a tiring but fun stretch of putting everything together for release. And I appreciate you guys following along for this long journey. Especially if you are still here from the first devlogs. Thanks for watching and see you next time.